Howdy folks! Today Jamie and I hiked Bio Canyon, which is actually a pair of trails in Los Alamos in northern New Mexico. I'm going to read the brief history of this canyon from a site called SciRadioactive.com, including some information that I previously didn't know. Seventy years ago, this secluded canyon outside Los Alamos, New Mexico, served host to a set of experiments that would forever change the course of human history. The deadly radioactive sources, explosions, and determined mines replaced with only hiking trails. All that remains here today is a bit of unique radioactive debris and a few warning signs and markers as a testament to what lies below. With the discovery of a new fissile metal, plutonium, the planners of the Manhattan Project began a second project to produce a bomb with a new element along with existing plans for one utilizing uranium-235. Scientists at Los Alamos had a high degree of confidence that the gun barrel design for combining two subcritical masses of uranium-235 would work, but more work was needed on a device utilizing plutonium. A crash program was soon underway for the much more technically challenging implosion design using plutonium-239. In such a design, a sphere of metal would be symmetrically crushed into supercriticality using an array of high explosive lenses. This approach to building a nuclear weapon was incredibly challenging, and scientists at the lab were tasked with developing techniques to image these implosions to refine the design. The radio lanthanum experiments in Bio Canyon became the most successful technique developed, and it was said that Rolla became the most important single experiment affecting final bomb design. The concept of radio lanthanum experiments at Bio Canyon worked essentially like an inverse x ray machine. Instead of taking a picture of a process using an external radiation source and detectors, the principle behind traditional radiography, the Rolla experiments use the imaging of an internal radioactive source to understand the dynamics of implosion, specifically the short-lived radioactive isotope lanthanum-140. Lanthanum was chosen because of its short half-life, gamma energy, and good availability. Its parent, barium-140, was an abundant fission product produced in uranium slugs at the graphite reactor X10 in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. The barium-140 was crudely separated and shipped to Los Alamos in lead-lined transportation casks where the lanthanum would be milked from the parent barium in Bio Canyon. For the raw loss shots, typically the source strength was a few hundred curries, but occasionally sources of more than 2,000 curries were used. The cameras for these experiments were originally pressurized ion chambers, which provided the speed and high area necessary to image the changing transmission of gamma rays during the implosions. By the early 1950s, these ion chambers were replaced by detectors filled with liquid scintillator, which allowed for improved resolution. So Jamie, what do you think of the Bio Canyon Trail? I think it's very scenic. Pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, it's a hiking trail it's in New a, Mexico? It, it is a hiking trail in New Mexico. Yeah. At this point in the trip, we headed back up the hill, skipping the stable route detour. Combining the high explosive experiments with a flammable solvent led to a predictably spectacular fireball during these later tests. The first Rolla shot in Bio Canyon occurred on September 22, 1944. Although initial experiments lacked a high degree of symmetry in the implosion, by 1945, tests provided an implosion that designers were satisfied would produce an atomic reaction. Hydrodynamic experiments at Bio Canyon continued after the war until 1962, with 254 experiments utilizing the Rolla method. In 1951, the radiological dispersals at Bio Canyon became of interest to simulate and model the dispersion of fallout from atmospheric atomic testing that started that year at the Atomic Energy Commission's Nevada Proving Ground north of Las Vegas, Nevada. Remediation work has focused on strontium-90 contaminated soils around the former radiochemistry facilities at the site. The barium-140 shipped to the site in the earlier years for use in the Rolla generators contained substantial quantities of this longer-lived material, which is also a high-yield fission product, chemically similar to barium. This relationship means that strontium-90 poses a biological hazard as a bone seeker, 
and also is well incorporated into calcium-rich plants at the site, whose roots grow deep into the contamination buried below. Other than small amounts of this radioisotope buried below the ground, nothing remains of the lab site. The most interesting remnants of the tests occur at Ground Zero, or the shot point for the tests, where debris still litters the canyon floor from the experiments. Debris include a wide manner of materials, including lead, copper, steel, and natural and depleted uranium, and some components are still identifiable. Many of these fragments of debris are still radioactive to some degree, primarily from uranium used as tampers and as surrogates for plutonium pits. As with the other expeditions to the site, analysis of this debris allows for reconstruction of the kinds of experiments conducted here. I hope you all enjoyed this short video. Until next time, have a great one.